Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm going to be talking about the way that you draw yourself and what it says about you. This is a tag yourself type video, I guess. So the first type of artist I want to talk about is the person who draws themselves like a blob. This is the opposite of idealizing yourself. This person, for whatever reason, decides to draw themselves as unflatteringly as possible, often to very comedic effect. Um, they usually draw themselves like extremely short and chubby, kind of like a little baby. If it's a girl, you can bet that she's gonna draw her hair like completely slicked back into a brutal ponytail or a bun. And if it's a guy, you can be sure that he's going to draw himself with the patchiest and most scraggly facial hair you can imagine. Uh, like literally like just a couple random strands like Charlie Brown's head. So you, you see these little uh, segments where they draw themselves, talking to their editors or whatever, and then you look up a picture of this person and it's like the most drop dead gorgeous person you've ever seen, like just stylish, uh, cute, um, just a very aesthetically pleasing person. And it's always such a shock because like when they draw themselves like this, I think it does sort of um, fill in that gap for you of what they look like. And then when you see what they look like in real life, it's just, it's completely surprising. Thing. I find there's a strong correlation between this type of self-image and comic webtoon or manga artists. Um, they are usually people whose art style normally is very pretty and aesthetic um, and who draw their characters in a very uh, charming sort of way, very beautiful, very handsome. This is especially true of like shoujo manga artists, like they're just beautiful but they draw themselves in the most unflattering light possible. So. Uh, I feel like if you draw yourself like this, there's a good chance that in real life you're extremely cute. Um, I also notice that people who draw themselves all slobby like this um, oftentimes seem to actually have their stuff together and in quite a shocking manner. Um, they're usually very organized, very on time. Uh, they work a lot. Uh, manga car, great example of this. Like They're doing tons and tons of pages of their comic, whatever project they're working on. They're just incredibly skilled and serious about their craft and I think that they're able to sort of express this like slovenly unappealing side of themselves um, in their little self-sona and I think that that's kind of an interesting impulse like I think that even those of us who do try really hard to fit the standard and do our best every single day deep down we still see ourselves like this um, I think that that's interesting um, <laughs> I uh, I never really did this myself um, I feel like whenever I was drawing my self-sona I'm I I might try to look a little feral, but um, it was definitely never to this level. <laughs> and uh, um, I think it's really funny. It's it's a good trend, honestly. Um, my favorite examples of these are in like the after manga side story things that a lot of manga artists will add. But I also see this um, being done by webtoon artists and stuff. In rare cases, you can even see these little insertions into the actual comic or manga that the artist is creating and usually their art style is also really detailed and pretty um, so it's extra funny to see them <laughs> drawing like this as well um, just very comedic very like doughy looking I don't know how else to describe it like the characters they draw in these little one shots um, about themselves and their editors and their process um, they look they look soft they look very like plushy um, and yeah it's just always it's always a shock it's always a shock to see the real person after you've been introduced to them looking like that Next up is the person who only draws themselves in realistic self-portraits. This is going to be somebody who has charcoal stains on their hands. They might very well be going to art school. If every time you draw yourself, you're using a reference or looking into a mirror or using reference photos of yourself, you're probably this type. Um, so basically, it's someone who is very serious about art, who is actively trying to learn um, fundamental skills, probably insanely stressed out, probably addicted to caffeine. Um, when uh, when this type of artist is drawing themselves, they're not really drawing a sona per se. Like oh, for a lot of people, I feel like the self sona as a concept is actually a way to like express the self um, in a way that's like more than your human face, you know, like you're trying to show something about yourself, about your internal self, and that's what's reflected in your self-sona or your persona um, or your avatar. Um, whereas this is somebody who is 
they're not even trying to do that right now. They're basically just really trying to learn how to draw and their own face is the easiest to reference. Um, now, I'm just going to warn you uh, right off the bat, if you are learning this way um, and you are doing tons of self-portraits, first of all, you're getting good company. A lot of artists learn that way. Um, but I will say that you might end up seeing your own face staring back at you when you don't expect it in future art endeavors. Um, usually, if you're training primarily off of your own face, you're going to accidentally put little characteristics of your face into other people that you paint or draw later on in the future. Not that that's the worst thing, that's not a huge deal, but I suppose it is something to be cognizant of if you are going for a very realistic portrait of someone else. Keep your eye out for features of your own face popping up in there. I know for me um, it always kind of showed itself with the proportions of the characters faces that I draw or the model. Um, I tended to match it a little closer to my own, um, just automatically, just on accident. Um, just like the spacing between like my nose and my mouth or my mouth and my chin, that kind of stuff. Like it's not like the individual features looked like my face, but it was kind of more the overall underlying structure. I just couldn't shake it for a long time and I think it is because I practiced a lot drawing my own face and I had a lot of art assignments in art school where um, the whole goal was just to draw yourself or paint yourself as accurately as possible. So yeah, <laughs> this if this is you, you are definitely going through it right now. You are trying to completely master your craft and I commend you for that. Um, but don't be afraid to draw a little cartoon here and there. You know, I'm always a proponent of that. Next up, I want to talk about the person who draws themselves like a cute little animal or like a little animal version of themselves. Now, just to be clear, I'm not talking about furries. That's a whole nother thing. Furries really are the master of the self-sona, like they get it. Um, this is something else. This is when someone draws themselves literally more like an animal, like maybe it has some clothes or uh, a little hat or something or some hair, but they're more like a calico critter or a Sanrio character than they are like, you know, like an anthro character. And weirdly enough, typically when I see someone who's drawing their themselves like this, chances are they're actually not nearly so cutesy in real life. They're oftentimes more like street style, like fashionable, cool, like very like acceptable in regular society. I don't know if you know what I mean, but like, you know, they come across cool. And then uh, you're always surprised to find out that like the way that they end up drawing themselves or uh, imagining themselves online is like this little bunny rabbit or something or like a little tiny teddy bear that walks around. Um, uh, oftentimes I feel like I see this in illustrators, people who do like long art projects. Um, it also I feel like is pretty common with people who grew up on the internet and did a lot of like deviant art community stuff but then later had to like clean up their act so that you know their their digital footprint is looking good for potential illustration clients um, you see a little bit of their old self peeking out through the way that they imagine themselves their self sona and oftentimes this allows them to create really cute little like four panel comics about their lives or something like that um, I think that the disconnect here is really funny because like you'll picture this person as being like I don't know like a little woodland creature and then you see them in real life and you're like wow are they are they wearing supreme like what what is this <laughs> um yeah uh it's it's a weird correlation i want to know if you guys have noticed this as well or if i'm just crazy um because i swear this is like an actual thing um and let me know if you draw yourself as a little woodland creature which creature and are you um do you do, are you cutesy in real life or is this like the way that you express that please let me know. Next up, I want to talk about the person who draws themselves like a Disney princess. This is the ultimate classic self-sona I feel like that many of us start with when we're young. Um, and I do find that the, if this is your persona, typically you are either pretty young or um, you're like you started drawing your self-sona when you were 
uh, young and you kind of kept the design. So this is usually a version of yourself that's like more idealized and closer to what you want to look like maybe in the future. I know for me, I used to draw myself as like a teenager when I was like 12 and like I imagined, you know, my hair would be really long and it would be all these different colors and that kind of thing. Um, so there's usually a lot of wish fulfillment in this type of self sona um, A lot of the times the character's characteristics are a lot more in line like with a Disney princess or some kind of model. Um, just like closer to what society seems to want um, a person to look like, especially when it comes to young girls. I think that there's a lot of ways that young girls deal with all the pressure and I think one of the ways is just to imagine yourself as fitting into all of these categories um, and drawing yourself like that. And I think that that can be uh, a, an, an interesting way to deal with that and not something that anybody should make fun of. I think that these are usually the targets for a lot of ridicule when you see someone drawing themselves in a super idealized way um, and I don't think that that's a good thing at all. Um, I think that every self-sona has its own perks and um, deserves to be respected. But anyway, I'll get off my high horse for a second and tell you more about this. Um, so uh, generally, I think that with this type, um, usually you're like a daydreamer, you're somebody who's looking to the future very optimistically, and you probably learn to draw with how to draw manga books um, or by trying to learn how to draw Disney princesses. Those are like the two main pathways. And while you may be drawing yourself Sona with two differently colored eyes or angel wings or a bunch of piercings or makeup that you don't actually have or know how to do, uh, it still feels authentically you. And in a sense, I think that it still is just because, um, at least in my case, when I used to draw myself, I used to draw myself with like pink hair um, that was longer than I actually had it grown and in the end I ended up uh, actually making myself look more like the way I used to draw myself so in a sense it was almost like looking into the future it's actually kind of cool um, a lot of the times this persona even has like some hallmarks of like your favorite media when you originally designed her um, so if you're like a huge Percy Jackson fan or um, you know, you <laughs> were obsessed with any particular anime or something, you might even have some hallmarks from those things that you used to love, um, which I also think is kind of cute. Next up, I want to talk about the person who literally draws themselves like a monster. Like, not a cute animal, but like some kind of creature. Uh, this is like an extreme version of the mangaka blob drawing that I was talking about at the start of the video. Um, but this is when someone draws themselves as like a inhuman critter. Um, so this isn't super common, but I definitely see it, especially on the internet. And I feel like oftentimes these types of artists are actually Actually quite shy um, and very very uh, connected to the internet and internet art communities. Um, I think that people who draw themselves as like a literal creature are very creative and they probably have some really surreal art they like to make and they just wanted their persona to sort of match that. They weren't interested in literally drawing you know the way that they do their hair or the clothes that they wear. They're probably not that interested in fashion in real life um, and they're not like overly interested in like selfies and that kind of thing. Um, they would rather be seen as this creature that they've designed that represents more like their soul rather than how they actually look in real life. Typically in real life, they either look kind of goth or edgy, or they have kind of futaba core from like Persona 5. Like they kind of stick to themselves and just stay in their room. They're a tiny bit chronically online perhaps, um, but they have a big circle of online friends that they genuinely love and talk to. They're also probably frequently on Discord. Um, when they're drawing themselves, I think that a lot of it has to do with their own sense of self. Like I think it's really interesting because when you meet someone who draws themselves completely differently from how they look, like not even a human, I feel like you're getting to actually learn more about them. Um, like I said, I mean, it's kind of like more of a drawing of their soul rather than themselves. Um, it's really the like complete opposite of the art school student who's truly just drawing, they're drawing their face, they're drawing their hair, they're drawing their clothes. Um, whereas this is getting onto the whole other side of the 
spectrum where this really has nothing to do with how you meet people um, in real life. This is, has everything to do with how you want to be perceived um, as a human being, um, which may mean not as a human being, it may mean as like a little goblin. Um, a lot of the times these artists are incredibly skilled, especially with um, very like detail oriented pen and paper type stuff. You can bet that this type of artist has a uh, banger collection of Inktober drawings or like art challenge drawings. They usually draw a lot um, and they're more likely to be like character designers. They might also like write on the side, um, do some of their own little projects and like have a novel that's like secretly hidden away in a word document somewhere. Um, just very creative people who maybe aren't the most social in real life um, but who definitely have a lot to offer uh, the art world. I used to love making up little monsters and critters like this um, and I had a brief period where I drew myself as a creature. This was definitely when I was in my like um, borderline hik hikikomori phase um, where I was almost a bit of a shut-in um, and I definitely correlate those things now. Um, I don't know if that's accurate for everyone who draws themselves like a little monster but I do feel like it's more likely for people who are really not into being perceived um, at the moment and I think that that even extends to the way that you draw yourself so hopefully I'm not going wildly out of pocket with my assumptions about this. So those are five different artists based on the way they draw themselves. Let me know if you were reflected in any of these or or um, if you have another way of drawing yourself that I didn't cover today, uh, let me know about it. Uh, thank you so much for watching till the end, and I'll see you in the next one. Huge thank you to my wonderful patrons, including Stan Soup, Liddy Savior, Roro, Birds on a Wire, Emmy Lightning, Rayons, Vorpal Matt, Brandon Stark, CB, Lucy Amajiki, Live Live, Salty Jackrabbit, Raven's Crow, Sasala, T Hill Music, Jabber Dabber Doo, Gender Was Stolen, Kadaria, Astral Fox Art, The Expressive Poker Face, Tsubaki, Cutie Pie, Ruined Rain Crow, Ice Cream Pal, Cola, JJ Jade, and of course, Live Live Live.